for the giant robot action. Stay for the compelling human drama. Will you survive Mobile Suit Gundam? Hello and welcome to a special episode of Earth Alien Protomet. This episode is going to be longer than most of my other videos, but there's a good reason for that. In case this episode's title has included you in, today I'm going to be talking about the classic mecha anime, Mobile Suit Gundam. There's a lot to unpack with this one, so let's get right to it. The year is 0079 of the Universal Century Calendar. Earth's burgeoning population has migrated to clusters of space colonies, called Sides, that orbit the Earth. The cluster of colonies furthest from the Earth, Side 3, frustrated over the fact that the planet's governing body, the Earth Federation, refuses to allow autonomous freedom to the Sides, declares itself the Principality of Zeon, and engages in a war for independence with the Federation. The Xeon makes incredible progress with their war effort due to the creation of large humanoid robot weapons called mobile suits. Hoping for a swift end to the conflict, Xeon drops a colony onto Earth, attempting to destroy Jaburo, the Federation's main headquarters in South America. Though Jaburo is spared, Sydney, Australia is transformed from a bustling city into a crater. When this operation proved a failure, the Principality of Xeon began a campaign to invade the Earth, using their mobile suits to swiftly conquer territory after territory. This left the Xeon frontline spread too thin to conquer further, while the Federation were powerless to push back their aggressors. By September of that year, both the Federation and Xeon have lost half of their respective populations. And all that? Everything I just talked about? That all happens before the first episode even begins. Quite a bit of it is explained in the show, or at least alluded to, but this show has quite the lore behind it. And the footage I've used comes from media released after the original Gundam, so from here on, the quality of the footage will be lower, but given that the show came out about 40 years ago, that's to be expected. Catching wind of the Federation's Operation V, Xeon soldiers under the command of Shar Aznebel investigate Side 7, where the Federation has been developing their own mobile suits. When a rookie soldier initiates an unprovoked attack on the colony where the Federation mobile suits are being transported, a young civilian, Amaro Ray, whose father was instrumental in the development of said mobile suits, is forced to pilot one of the mobile suits, the Gundam, in the hopes of protecting the survivors of the attack from further harm. This triggers a desperate struggle to escape the colony aboard the Federation battlecruiser, White Base, and hopefully reach safety from Xeon's forces. Notice how I barely talked about the mecha in this series? Well, that's because while the series is called Mobile Suit Gundam, the series isn't actually about the Gundam, but rather about the human characters, primarily the Gundam's pilot, Amuro Ray, who grows as a character over the course of the series. That's not to say that the giant robot fights aren't important to the plot, or that they're bad and uninteresting. If you're watching the show for the mecha action, you will be incredibly satisfied, as the fights are excellent spectacles that help to punctuate the incredible human drama that is the main focus of the show's plot. And the fact that the mobile suits aren't fantastical super weapons with superpowers, a la Mazinger Z, was incredibly original at the time, resulting in Mobile Suit Gundam practically creating the real robot genre of mecha anime. But as I've said multiple times now, to the point where I really can't shut up about it, the focus is on the human characters and how they deal with the war that surrounds them. The White Base crew aren't hardened soldiers, expertly downing enemy combatants as if they were made of paper, but rather untrained civilians battling more veteran warriors solely because they want to survive to live another day. And not everyone does. Death in Mobile Suit Gundam carries weight, with the deaths of characters having lasting effects on the people that knew the Fallen. And even the Principality of Xeon, the de facto villains of the series, aren't necessarily evil. While the ruling family, the Zabis, are largely corrupt and perpetuate the war for their own political gain, the majority of Xeon soldiers are just fighting for their independence from the Earth Federation, a group that aren't exactly saints. It's easy to say that the Federation are the good guys and the Xeon are the bad guys, but the truth is that it's more complicated than that. 
But of all the characters, probably the most interesting is Shar Aznable. There's much more to the man behind the mask than it may seem, with his story being expounded upon later on in the show and in subsequent media. The show does have some standard tropes of the mecha genre, such as the occasional fantastical weapon, <coughs> Gundam Hammer, <coughs> and even the obligatory child characters, but I don't feel that these necessarily detract from the series and are handled surprisingly well. The animation does look kinda wonky sometimes, but it's great more often than not. Unfortunately, while Mobile Suit Gundam was a revolutionary series, when it first aired, the series didn't fare too well, due in part to poor toy sales, and was shortened to 43 episodes instead of the planned 52. As a result, the show had to rush through its final few episodes, leaving some plot lines well rushed and left underdeveloped. Case in point, the late introduction of the concept of the new type, which is left somewhat vague, but seems to be close to psychic. The compilation movies resolve this issue by introducing the concept early on, and while not fully explain it, expand on it by the end of the third film. Had Mobile Suit Gundam been allowed to finish its full run, it could have been a lot better than it was. But it was still really good. And the initial airing misfortune wasn't limited to its home country, as the U.S. airing was cut short due in part to the 9-11 terrorist attacks on the World Trade Center. The release of the aforementioned movie and the accompanying model kits breathed new life into the series. The show also had story concepts that were dropped from the final version of the show, only to be revisited in later media. This revival resulted in new shows set after the original series, such as 0083 Stardust Memory, Mobile Suit Zeta Gundam, and Mobile Suit Victory Gundam. There were also a number of shows set during the war depicted in the original series, such as the 08th MS Team, 0080 War in the Pocket, and MS Igloo. And then there are the shows with Gundams in them that are set in timelines separate from the original series, such as New Mobile Report Gundam Wing, Mobile Suit Gundam Seed, and Mobile Fighter G Gundam, aka Best Gundam. And those are only a few of the many pieces of media in the Gundam franchise. Add in video games, mangas, novels, the number of spin-off media skyrockets. <laughs> And the model kits have become popular enough that there are even shows about building models. They don't even have giant robots, and they're still good shows. <laughs> Not only can I recommend Mobile Suit Gundam, I would call it a must-watch for any enthusiast of the mecha genre. I would also recommend checking out Mobile Suit Gundam The Origin, as these movies depict more of the lead-up to the events of the original series. I would love to revisit this franchise more in more videos, just not on this channel. There are a lot of mega shows I would like to cover over here, so any subsequent Gundam videos I'll probably be covering over on my personal channel. Until next time, this has been me, Protomet. See ya!